Introduction to the work of the Holy Spirit in the Church, what we call the mysteries, the sacraments, things that are above our capabilities as limited minds and limited humans, things of God, things that God does that we can only look at and perceive and apprehend, not fully comprehend, but we just glorify and we praise and we bless and we partake of because through these mysteries we attain salvation because that's what the Lord said and we're going to go over that. The work of the Holy Spirit in the church, the mysteries, the sacraments. Sacraments of the church, Greek, mysterion, right, Latin, sacramental. When we say that, we're talking about like an external physical action. Uh, that heals and gives some type of invisible grace, right? Some, some, something physical is happening, but there's more to what's happening that meets the physical eye, okay? And all that was instituted by Christ when He was on the earth. And that was, of course, delivered by Christ to us through the apostles and the fathers and was described in the scriptures and through the apostolic oral traditions that were recorded and preserved in the writings of the fathers from generation to generation. So when St. Paul says keep the oral traditions you were taught and keep uh, everything that I have told you in scripture when he says that all of these oral traditions were eventually recorded in writings in apostolic fathers writings or the disciples of the disciples of Christ okay so those are the apostolic fathers and these oral traditions were recorded in, in the apostolic fathers right in the the end of the first the second third Fourth, all of that, right? So all of the oral traditions were recorded, right? Everything that the Lord taught orally, because the Lord spent three years with the disciples, right? So again, not everything, as St. John was saying in the end of his gospel, not everything that the Lord said or taught or done was written down, because again, if everything he has done was written down, as St. John was saying, not even all the books in the world would fit. That's why, again, Jesus was saying, in the Gospel of John, and all the Gospels actually, but specifically in depth in the Gospel of John, he was saying, I, I didn't really teach you everything, but there will come one after me, the Holy Spirit, and he will come and teach you all things. So through the oral traditions which were recorded in the Apostolic Father's writings and in the Father's writings who were all writing through the Spirit of God, we have these sacraments of the church. We have these mystery ones. Right? Also, the sacraments are sometimes described uh, by some other churches as channels by which we receive grace and blessing of the Holy Spirit, not just blessing, anointing of the Holy Spirit. Right? Let's uh, mention some of them. Let's mention some of these mysteries that the Holy Spirit works inside the church. Okay. So uh, some people in other churches uh, are gonna. Uh, categorize some of these mysteries that the Holy Spirit works in the church in two categories redemptive or uh, redemptive means they are necessary for salvation and then uh, non-redemptive or not really necessary for salvation just graces that the Holy Spirit works with some people but not others so again these redemptive um, sacraments uh, or, or mysteries are ones that every believer should practice in and and partake from in order to gain eternal life okay to to be rooted in christ the mysteries that the holy spirit works in the church are beyond just some human um classifications uh but again just a way easier way to understand it um is this kind of redemptive and non-redemptive way that's why we're listing it but i just want you to understand that the Holy Spirit works beyond that. So those sacraments are beyond these classifications or the numberings that sometimes we give them. Okay. So our uh, redemptive necessary for salvation are baptism and chrismation or confirmation and then repentance and confession and the Holy Eucharist. And we're going to have videos on every one of them. Okay. On every one of these, we're going to prove them historically from the fathers, from the apostles, from the writings of the, the, the apostolic fathers, the people right after the disciples, the ones that recorded what the disciples and the apostles taught, because that's the disciples and apostles taught what the Lord taught. And if you don't believe that this 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 tradition kept being passed down in good faith and, and, and accurately, you actually don't believe the Lord in the Great Commission in the last words 
of the book of Matthew when he says what? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Amen. The Lord said, all authority has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, not Bible readers, not anything, disciples at church, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. So if you don't trust the disciples, that means you don't trust the ones that the Lord trusted to deliver to us His commandments. This discipleship gave of this. Of course, this is seen through Scripture, confirmed by the Scripture, but it predated Scripture. It was before Scripture. These sacraments, these things were happening in the first Christian church before the, 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 the actual Bible was gathered together or was written even through the fathers, through the Holy Spirit, of course. Christ himself established and the apostles taught, the apostolic fathers also taught, and then the fathers took it from them and also taught. And we have all the writings. We have scripture or the first generation's writings or the apostles and the disciples' writings. And we have the apostolic fathers' writings. And we also have the fathers' writings. So we can keep track. Did anything change? Did they deliver to us exactly what the Lord taught? And we can confirm, is this true? Is this all necessary? Is this all the real deal? Okay, so we're going to discuss all of that in depth. Okay, so the redemptive, necessary, baptism, chrismation, or confirmation, and then repentance, confession, and holy Eucharist. Non-redemptive, uh, as some people call it, okay? Again, meaning not necessary for salvation, or if you don't have these, um, it's, I mean, it's not something that, it's, it's, it's special graces, let's call it that, right? Special work of the Holy Spirit with certain people that, God um, allows them to have these graces, right? The Holy Spirit works in our lives in specific ways, as we'll see here, okay? The first one is matrimony, marriage, okay? So marriage is a sacrament or a mystery that God um, gave us, right? The man and the woman become one. It's not just that they become one. It actually is that God becomes their third. God becomes their trinity, okay? So there is God and then man and woman, okay? So that's the trinity of matrimony okay and then uh the holy orders right priesthood is another one of these mysteries of these sacraments of the church again not everybody uh needs this special priesthood right again as we're going to go over when we discuss priesthood there's different types of priesthood um there's the priesthood that everybody is priests right as the lord says in the old and new testament everybody is a holy priesthood a royal nation a, 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 a holy people all that good stuff and then also there is the special set apart priesthood as the lord said in uh the old testament set apart like the ones of the levites right the sons of aaron the ones who are consecrated to serve the lord right so in the same chapters, uh, the Lord was saying, hey, all the people are my people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Um, uh, and then he would, a couple of chapters later, he would say, but that's aside, there is these people, sons of Aaron, they're set apart for me. They're presbyters, they're priests who are set apart. They're my portion. They're the ones that serve me. Okay, so that's priesthood. So these are holy orders. They're, again, non-redemptive. Um, doesn't have to do with, with salvation, really, right? Uh, not everybody is this special kind of priesthood. It's those who, by divine will, anointed. Uh, and then also another one of these mysteries or sacraments is the unction or the anointing of the sick. And we see that throughout history and through uh, the Bible, actually, and Scripture. And we'll go over that in another video. And then uh, finally, again, as we said, um, let's not limit the mysteries or the work of the Holy Spirit um, to numberings or anything like that. Okay, so the, the, the Holy Spirit works in the church, works through the people of God, through the body of Christ, through the sons and daughters of God by adoption. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God works in them in many other ways. So th these are just classifications so we can understand and learn them and, and it helps us remember them. But God incarnate, Jesus Christ, did not come and he listed four sacraments that are redemptive and, and then another three that are non-redemptive. No, no, he didn't mention that because it doesn't really work like that with God. 